Hello everyone, my name is Dennis with Donkey Psych or Donkey Security, whatever your heart desires. And in today's video, we're going to be doing another Blue Team Labs online, which is another weird name called Kerulean. So this is the only lab that is retired and free, which means this might be the last BTLO lab that we can do, right? Because if the lab is retired, that means we can do a write-up and a YouTube video on it. But there's a lot of free content here. If I just remove the retired filter, there's a lot of free content here but I can't do any of them because they are not retired. So yeah, we'll make most of this lab and uh, let's get straight on to it. Question one, when did Jane receive malicious mail from an attacker pretending to be from IT support? Check the web history to help us better timeline this series of events. So after looking at the readme notepad in the desktop right here, it says most of the tools will not be used. You can complete the lab using the tools or report. So here are all the tools that we can use if it wants to load properly. So here are all the tools we can use here. I know I'm familiar with some of those such as EaseViewer, Venlog Explorer, Registry Explorer, Hindsight, yeah. And then a Magnet Axiom Examiner. It's like a forensic report and it's just a bunch of IOCs, you know, URLs about the report of this respective lab. So in the command prompt that we type in all of this stuff in and this just triggers the Hindsight and this triggers the input of the folder that we want to capture, which is for this question in particular, we want to capture uh, Google Chrome user data and the output will be the desktop. And to make sure that the command is working, we do have a processing of the input directory and then the output name. And then just to double check that it is working, we should have it right here. And then I clicked file and then I opened it and then I opened that dot XL at S X file on from the desktop. And we should contain a lot of, you know, Chrome web browser history. So I tried just, you know, search for IT support. Nothing did factor in for me there, but now I'm looking at the columns and all the way to the fourth column if i just scroll here really quick yeah usually the fourth column is like the name or title of like what the user is doing like for example redirecting slack so right here we can actually you know see the name of it support we can just do it sup and then see we do have it support remote check and then in order to answer the question we need to format it so we got to go all the way to the third column i believe which is time and date nope second column i would assume it's the first one here so let's just copy this really quick yep answer is correct third actor immediately after rdp tries to log into storage based resources what is the one with the most traffic so to answer this question you can either go on timeline explorer and you can do drive and the reason why we came to drive is just by looking at immediately after because immediately after rdping so receives the email pretending to be from it support i assume jane clicks it and then attacker remote accesses into the system and this is 2045 this is 210 so literally like what is that i can't do math right now but like as soon as after there's a google search for google drive and then google drive drive google drive again <laughs> A lot of Google Drives. And then you, we can also go to the reports. So yeah, we can go to the report, click on cloud services, URLs, and then we can just filter site name, drive again. We can see 62 pages out of the 65 in total access to Google Drive. What is the one with the most traffic? Yeah, storage name, Google Drive. Easy question right there. Looks like the third actor's motive is data exfiltration via RDP. Yep, just like we just said. What ITM ID corresponds with this technique? So I think we just go to insider threat matrix or threat matrix is that org. We just search up Google drive here. Then exfiltration of via cloud storage. I believe it's I have so zero one maybe. Yeah, ID is right here, top right. All right, correct. Let's step back a bit. Jane's account mistakenly has admin rights. What role do they assign to her? So I've been told the registry explorer takes a long time to load. So let's just do the other questions really quick. She downloads Slack for RGB connection. Main point of communication is team. So this is strange. What is installation date and time of the software? So easily we'll just go back to report again because it's quicker. Then scoot our way to installed programs. And then we do have Slack here. So I think we just filter Slack here. Maybe if there's only one Slack there, that is the answer. Yeah, should be the answer. Copy this. 
based in here, change the time to UTC, and then let's erase, wait, and I should be the answer. <laughs> There's a lot of funky business going on here. Yeah, I know the self just to type the answer, because don't ever copy and paste it, because it's going to be a lot of reformatting. But yeah, that's the answer right here. You just got to reformat it a bit. There's enough evidence of Slack being used on Jane's machine. Can you provide the unofficial URL being utilized for communication? Yeah, let's go back on our timeline explorer and then let's search up some Slack URLs. So after looking at all of the like Slack URLs, the only thing that caught my interest was this. And the reason why is because it has, you know, 443 in it. Port 443 used for communication. So that should give us a hint. You know, maybe I could have just wrote 443 instead. And then send Surulin, whatever, and that's the name of the lab. So I'm like, why not? That should be the answer. Yep, that is the correct answer. So I provide the initial time and origin IP address for the RDB connection to Jane's workstation. So let's just go back onto our report really quick. Remote desktop protocol. So we want to filter connections to Jane's workstation. So we can just filter here, Jane, really quick, right? Really weird format. So. Let's just format it how this lab wants us to. And this is the original, by the way, because you can just see from the filter here really quick. Original is 38 uh, compared to 41. Yeah, I don't know how I got that right with the formatting, but yes, this is the correct answer right here. So I did use AI for question four. Uh, so we did open up Registry Explorer. So yeah, we went to C drive, users, BTLO, test, desktop, investigation, CAPE, triage, Jane, C drive, Windows, System32, config, SAM. And then we have the root of the user so then i went to sam domains and then we see here name is jane and then we have her value type which is 0x3f2 and then we match that with this right here and we look at the f and then we do see that she is added to the administrator group and according to ai because i had no clue what i'm seeing right here chat said that the user has been assigned administrator role according to these binary numbers. But obviously you can't really check what ChatGPT is saying because sometimes it's false. So we went back to the forensic report and ChatGPT was correct. The user has been added to the administrator group. However, the question wanted us to answer it as MSFT admin as the role that they assigned her to. So MSFT admin, the database specialist. So yeah, question eight, our Project Venus plans were lead triggering the defenses. What are the four documents in alphabetical order? So we're in the Winners Defender logs from the desktop investigation and all the way to the support folder. And then right here, we're going to click on MP log. And then we're just going to do control F and then just we're going to do project. And then right here, we do see four Project Venus solar panel, Project Venus wind turbine, Project Venus energy storage, and then a uh, weird name, Project Venus research. Thank you for watching. Definitely had to use the resources, but I definitely learned a lot, man. Like always, I'll see you when I see you in my next video. Peace out.